In this video, we're going to go over my favorite Mac apps in four categories of create, consume, connect, and coordinate. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a doctor based in the UK. And on this channel, we explore the different ways we can get more done while having more fun. I feel like that should be a new tagline. Anyway, a big part of getting more done while having fun is the apps that we're using on a MacBook at all times. And so in this video, I'm gonna break down all of the different apps that I use with timestamps and links to everything in the video description. So feel free to skip around the video if you feel like it. All right, let's kick things off with the create category. And there are seven apps in this, the first one being Google Chrome, and now, like these days, I seem to spend most of my life in Chrome around a few central web apps. Now, the main one that I use for most of my personal note taking and general life management type stuff is called Rome Research. This is a sort of niche subscription based kind of note taking app, but it's not really a note taking app. It's sort of like a generalized second brain personal knowledge management -y type app. There's a lot to go into about Rome. I have a dedicated video about it up there and I've got loads more info on my workflow series on Nebula, which I'll tell you more about in a little bit. But essentially the things I use Rome for is first thing in the morning, I do morning pages. Morning pages is this thing where you just sort of write out a morning journal. Uh, these days I like to write three things that I'm grateful for. Uh, I like to write three things that I'm gonna do to make today great. And I've recently started experimenting with this kind of affirmation type stuff after speaking to Justin Khan on a YouTube live stream where he recommended all of these things as being nice ways to add a little bit more wellness and mindfulness and happiness to one's life. Once I've done that, I like to write the phrase, today is gonna be the best day ever, which then kind of prompts me to write more and more stuff. And usually by the time I get one or two paragraphs in, I realize, oh, I could do this and this and that. And I sort of get derailed from my morning journaling practice, but hey, it's all good. It's a work in progress. Then once I've done my morning pages, I always set a daily highlight. This is the one thing that I wanna to accomplish today. And if I get it done, then today will have been a win. And that is filming this video. And so while earlier today I was sitting on the sofa on my on my MacBook, just browsing this out. I actually kind of typed out a lot of notes for this very video in Rome itself. I also use Rome for a lot of other things, including anywhere to-do lists and personal knowledge management and second brain note-taking and the lazy Zettelkasten method and like using my weekly reviews. All of that are gonna be coming in a video at some point. But if you wanna learn more about them now, they're all on the workflow series that I've got on Nebula. More details in the video description and I'll tell you about it at the end. Secondly, I spend a lot of time inside the Gmail app uh, on Chrome. Now, back in the day, I used to use Superhuman to manage my email. Superhuman recently has been a little bit buggy on the M1 Mac Mini and the M1 MacBook Pro. And so I've ended up just using gmail.com for most of my email management. And the thing that I like about using gmail.com rather than having a dedicated app is that there is friction. It takes a few seconds for gmail.com to load. And because for me, my major productivity is not in replying to emails. It means that if I make it less likely that I'll reply to emails, Yes, some people might get annoyed that I'm slow in replying to emails, but overall I get a lot more done. Whereas if you're the sort of person whose job literally relies on you replying to emails, then it makes sense to have a dedicated app that lets you do it super, super fast. Thirdly, I spend a large amount of time in Google Docs. This is predominantly where me and my team write blog posts for my website and where I'm spending most of my time in writing my book proposal and compiling research and notes for my book. And I also spend a large amount of time in Google Slides making presentations. Now, I don't bother with PowerPoint on Keynote because Google Slides is just super easy and it's all within Chrome and it's nice. And actually yesterday and the day before over the weekend, I was uh, running this crash course for how to use Rome research where all the proceeds were donated to the Against Malaria Foundation. And we raised, I think $8,000 uh, for charity through this like live course. And that was nice. Like it's nice using Google Slides for this sort of thing. And these days we're in the middle of cohort two of my part-time YouTuber Academy. So I spend a huge amount of time in Google Slides sorting out our presentations. And you know, this is one that we've been doing around gear and finding a niche and like different types of gear and audio and video and all this cool kind of stuff. Uh, so lots and lots and lots of time spent <laughs> in Google Slides. In terms of extensions, there are three that I use on a daily basis. Firstly is Video Speed Controller, which lets me speed up YouTube videos and anything else that I'm watching to like 3X or 4X. Secondly, the Instapaper Save Extension. Instapaper is nice because if I wanna read an article, I save it to Instapaper, then I can read it on Instapaper across any of my devices. And the best thing is when I highlight anything on Instapaper, it syncs automatically to Rome thanks to Readwise, more on that in a detail up there called the Magical Insight Logging Framework. And finally, because I'm a YouTuber, I end up using TubeBuddy quite a lot. TubeBuddy is a fantastic Chrome extension for YouTubers. It lets you see search traffic and do A-B testing and do all a load of stuff. Uh, link to a 60 day free trial if you wanna check it out in the video description. So that was Chrome. That's where I spend the bulk of my time. I probably spend the second most of my time on Notion, which is another one of my favorite productivity apps. And in terms of using Rome versus Notion, Rome is what I use for most of my personal stuff, any kind of personal note taking that I need to do books that I've read, note taking, that sort of thing. But then Notion is where stuff goes if it involves a production process with my team. 
So anything for a part-time YouTuber academy, anything for the YouTube channel, anything for a podcast, usually goes into Notion so that I can work on it with my team. Here's our page, for example, for the part-time YouTuber academy. Our next cohort is gonna start in June, 2021. Link in the video description if you wanna join the waiting list for that. But we've got tons and tons of information that our team, that helps our team kind of manage this along with calendars and checklists and logistics and all this fun stuff. We also use it to manage our video production schedule for YouTube videos. So you can have a little sneak peek of what's going on on the channel for the next month or so. And we're also using Notion to manage a lot of the research for the book that I'm writing. So we've got research banks for every chapter and summaries of books and stuff that me and my team are reading to try and create this book that I'm ultimately trying to make in the next two years. Uh, there's a link in the video description, again, uh, to my book email list for my book journey. If you want to keep abreast of developments in my book journey and get like sneak previews of chapters and all of that kind of fun stuff. So that was Chrome and that was Notion, which is where I spend most of my time. Next, we have a very fun app called Loom. Now Loom is a very easy way of recording videos uh, while recording your screen. And this is what I use for a lot of uh, screencasts to give to my team, but also within our part-time YouTuber Academy, uh, for the people on the executive tier plan, plan, I give them personalized feedback on their YouTube videos. And so I just open up Loom, watch their YouTube video, and as I'm watching it, I can comment along and share my thoughts on the video, which is quite nice. Yeah, mate, this is so intriguing. I'm like hooked right now, and I wish this were at the start of the video rather than at the end of it. App number four that I use for creation is called Figma. Figma is what I use to help design websites and to design like thumbnail designs and branding guidelines and all this sort of general graphic-y designing stuff that doesn't need something dedicated like Photoshop. So for example, recently I did a whole redesign of my personal website. You can check it out, link in the video description. Hey friends, I'm Ali, I'm a doctor, YouTube podcaster, this sort of stuff. And so I was making all of this stuff on Figma and Figma makes it like super easy to move things around and like, you know, do cool stuff like that. And we've got designs for different types of blog posts. So for example, the ultimate guide to studying for exams, bit of emojis, we've got a bit of a table of contents going on. We've got a nice little sidebar over here. All of this was stuff that I designed in Figma and then handed off to a developer called Dan who coded it into our theme, which was running on Ghost, the website platform. We also have a nice little book summary section, which I think looks looks kind of pretty. And we're working on building that up on the website as well. And we're also using Figma to design all of the materials for mine and my brother's weekly podcast, which now has a YouTube channel. Again, you can check it out linked in the video description. And so on Figma, we were kind of figuring out what's the YouTube cover banner gonna, gonna look like? What are the thumbnails gonna look like? And so me and my brother are still going back and forth about this, but we think we might try and design the thumbnails to look something like this around emotional roller coasters or whatever the title of the video might be. And the nice thing about Figma is that it's free and you can use it with a team. And it's usually all in the browser, but they do have a Mac app as well, which I have on my MacBook Pro and on my Mac mini. So if you're interested in any kind of web designy, graphic designy stuff, 100% recommend Figma to dabble with. Next on the list, we have an app called Day One, which is what I use for journaling. Now I have a private journal, which I'm not gonna show you because I always accidentally show screenshots of it. I also have a journal called Nice Comments, which is where I post screenshots and automatically forward emails that contain like nice comments straight into that journal. So if I'm feeling sad, I can look through my 467 journal entries for nice comments and kind of feel a little bit of an emotional and spiritual boost. And I've got this uh, memorabilia journal. So for example, if a friend gives me a birthday card and I consider myself a bit of a minimalist and so I wanna throw the birthday card in the bin, I take a photo of the birthday card, put it into day one, and then I will have it forever. And then I can throw the piece of paper in the bin. Next on the list, we have Microsoft Word. Yes, I still use Microsoft Word because my editor at the publishing house likes using Microsoft Word. And even though I like using Google Docs with my team for everything, when it comes to the book, we often go back and forth between Microsoft Word files, which is just kind of funny, but it's actually pretty good because if you want, you can turn off your internet and do something in Microsoft Word and it's tracked changes features are very easy to use, which means you can see what changes an editor has suggested to the stuff that you're writing. And you can like collaborate on written documents that way. And finally, I use the app Sublime Text to make changes to my website. So I fancy myself a little bit of a coder because I used to code quite a lot when I was younger. I don't do it that much anymore, but I still know enough about coding to be able to tweak bits of my website and add stuff here and there when I want to. And Sublime Text is just the code editor of choice that I've been using for the last decade. And so I've got no reason to switch to something like Visual Studio Code, which I think a lot of people are using these days. Next, let's move on to my consumption apps. And there are three broad things in this list. Firstly, we have the Kindle app. Kindle app is absolutely fantastic. I use Kindle across all my devices, phone, iPad, and an actual Kindle. 
And the nice thing about having it on the Mac as well is that I can very easily flick through my highlights of the books that I'm reading and I can highlight things. And because I highlight things, they get synchronized with Roam and Notion automatically, more in that video over there about the magical insight logging framework. Next, we have the app Instapaper. I use Instapaper on Mac to read articles. And then again, when I highlight them, they synchronize automatically with Roam and Notion, thanks to Readwise. And thirdly, on the consumption front, I use Spotify for all of my music of choice. I would dearly love to switch to Apple Music so then I can be 100% in the Apple ecosystem. But every time I've tried, it's just been so, so, so bad compared to Spotify. So I just absolutely love Spotify. By the way, check out my Spotify profile linked in the video description if you wanna see what sort of music I like. Next on the list, we have Connect. Now these are apps for connecting and communicating and making friends and maintaining relationships and all that fun stuff. Firstly, let's start with Zoom. We're all familiar with Zoom. We know what Zoom is. I seem to spend most of my life on various Zoom calls these days. But what you might not know is that there is another amazing app called Grain. And Grain is really interesting because Grain automatically can record your Zoom calls and it can transcribe them. And so if I'm having a Zoom call with someone, I know that there's always a transcript of it that's available. And even while I'm doing the Zoom call, I can take notes within the Grain app and then it flags up the points where I was taking notes in the transcript. And so for example, I'm having loads of interviews and phone calls with people around my book these days. And so if they say something particularly interesting, I can just do a little star emoji on Grain and then I can find that point if I ever need to go back to it again. So Grain plus Zoom is absolutely amazing. I've also been spending tons and tons of time on Zoom because we're running my part-time YouTuber Academy and we're using Zoom. Uh, I think we're paying like 400 pounds a month for Zoom for all the various features that we use. We're using Zoom for that. And I've also been running Zoom co-working sessions with people from all around the world where every morning we get together on a Zoom call, I share my Spotify instrumental playlist, and we all do work together using the Pomodoro technique. So yeah, a lot I owe to Zoom these days. Next, we have the app Slack. Now I use Slack for most of my team communication. We also have a Slack team for a part-time YouTuber, Inner Circle, which is a membership community. I also use Slack for like a ton of other things. For example, for our podcast, Not Overthinking, we have a private members only Slack group. And I think Slack is where I spend the fourth largest amount of time. So Rome, Notion, Zoom, and Slack are like my top four in terms of like actual usage. Then we have two fairly quick things. We have WhatsApp Web, which is a very easy way of replying to WhatsApp messages because I absolutely suck at replying to WhatsApp messages on my phone because typing on it is just so, so, so painfully slow. Therefore, I use WhatsApp Web, which has a native Mac app for it, which is nice. And finally, we have the apps for coordination. Now there's actually quite a lot to talk about here. This is a topic that I'm extremely passionate about. Let's start with a few utilities that I can't live without. This is the stuff that I always install on my Mac anytime I get a new Mac or anytime I do a refresh. The first one is Alfred. Now, Alfred is amazing. Alfred is a spotlight replacement tool which means you can hit command and space bar and you can type in anything and it opens up apps, it does web searches for you, it gives you snippets. It's got loads and loads and loads of features that are too numerous to elucidate. Elucidate, is that the right word? In one video. I also talk about Alfred more in my workflow series on Nebula, more on that in a second. Next, we have the app Moom. Now, Moom is what I use for window management. Now, the nice thing about Moom is that you can create keyboard shortcuts that let you snap windows to certain parts of the screen. Moom is mostly what I use when I'm on my huge ass 49 inch ultra wide monitor. Because when you've got that much screen real estate, it's really important to figure out like, you know, have a way of snapping windows to the middle, off to the side, off to the other side. Usually when I'm on my MacBook Pro, it's quite a tiny screen. It's a 13 inch MacBook Pro. And therefore I only really use one app at a time. Very occasionally, if I'm on my Kindle on one half of the screen and taking notes in Roam on the other half, then I'll use Moom to sort of sort out the window management. But normally, it's uh, reserved for my Mac mini. Next, we have the app Flux, which basically helps turn your screen yellow when it's nighttime. Uh, I know that iOS has, a, uh, Mac OS has a built-in one, uh, whatever it's called, nighttime, night display, true tone, something like that. But I find Flux to be more yellow. And because I often work late into the night, I like my screen to be very, very, very yellow. So I'm limiting the blue light exposure to my eyes, which is apparently good for you. In terms of passwords, I use Dashlane as my password manager of choice. Therefore, I can't live without it because I don't remember any passwords. They're all stored nicely and securely in Dashlane. And the app that I use to take notes um, when I'm on the go is actually Drafts. Now Drafts is basically like Apple Notes in that you've got it across all your devices, Apple Watch, phone, iPad, MacBook, et cetera, et cetera. But it just, I just find it to be a little bit faster. And so if I need to type anything on the go, Drafts is the first app that I'll open on any device. Or if I'm driving or walking and I wanna dictate a note into my Apple Watch, I have the Drafts widget on my Apple Watch that lets me dictate into it and that syncs across all my devices as well. And so Drafts for me really acts as a quick capture inbox which means like, you know, if I'm if I'm taking notes on something, it'll start off in drafts, but then usually it'll end up either in Roam or in Notion, depending on what it's being used for. Let's talk a little bit about photo management now. And there's two apps that I use for photo management. Firstly, I just use the box standard Apple Photos. The nice thing about this is 
all of the zillions, zillions of photos that I take on my iPhone or from my camera, I can just drag and drop straight into Apple Photos. In fact, on the phone, it syncs automatically. And I trust that they'll be there whenever I need them. And the people feature is cool because it helps pick out people from your photos. So let's see, this is my brother who I do the podcast with. Check out our YouTube channel, link in the video description. That's not him. That, that's me. That's not him. <laughs> that's him. That's not him. That's not him. That's not him. That's him and that's him. And I can, I can tag these photos of my brother. And then the cool thing is that it like lets you see all of the photos that you've got with these people. It creates custom albums for them. And the cool thing is that it even generates these automatically generated videos for people in your people album. And this is nice because if it's someone other than my brother who's kind of less tech savvy and it's their birthday who's come up, then I can send them the video that Apple Photos automatically generates with a nice like musical track in the background. And then that person will hopefully think, oh my God, Ali put the time and effort to create a custom video for me for my birthday. Isn't he such a thoughtful boy? Um, whereas obviously this is just like purely automatically generated thanks to Apple Photos. And it genuinely is just quite nice. Like this is a pretty, pretty solid, nice wholesome video. I can watch it and it's gonna be like, oh, hello. Uh, I can watch it, it can remind me of memories, any times that I've spent with my brother, which is generally good all around. And the other app that I use for my photo management is Lightroom CC. And this is the mobile kind of web cloud synced Lightroom. I don't really use Lightroom Classic because I'm not a pro photographer. I just take tons and tons and tons of photos of myself for various thumbnails. And so I've got these like shared albums that I can share with my team with like hundreds and hundreds of photos of me in varying, like various degrees of compromising positions and poses so that I can do them for thumbnails. And the cool thing about Light Lightroom is that it has nice um, kind of photo editing features as well. So famously, when you do thumbnails on YouTube, you wanna make them pop because they get compressed so much and shrunk so much that kind of this is the before photo, which looks like a reasonable photo. This is after I've done all my edits, which looks a bit like ridiculous. You wouldn't edit a photo like that normally, but because YouTube shrinks it down, it makes sense to make the photo pop a little bit more. So it stands out more and feels a little bit more clickbaity. So people like you guys can actually click on it. And finally, in terms of file organization, I actually just use Google Drive, usually on the web. I don't do any kind of local syncing because these days I don't work with a lot of local files. The only local files I work with are video files from YouTube videos and stuff and Zoom recordings. I put those into a folder called the holding zone and then I immediately upload them to my uh, team's Google Drive, which has unlimited storage on it. So far we've used 12.3 terabytes. Thank you, Google, uh, for the uh, unlimited storage, which I think is going away sometime soon. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is more about Rome. So I mentioned Rome right at the start and I said that I've got this workflow series on Nebula. Now, if you haven't heard, Nebula is an independent streaming platform that's built by me and a bunch of other creators. And on Nebula, we can put all of the content that wouldn't necessarily work on YouTube. So it's not like a YouTube competitor, but if we've got like going super, super in depth about certain apps, which is what I do in my workflow series, that's the sort of stuff that's probably a little bit niche for YouTube. And so it's nice having Nebula as a store for that. On Nebula, you'll also find early access to my videos and ad free access to those videos. So there's no ads on Nebula. These sorts of ads are taken out for Nebula videos. And it's not just me, it's a bunch of other creators that you might've heard of as well, like Thomas Frank and Wendover Productions and Legal Eagle and Lindsay Ellis and Tom Scott. Now, if you wanna get access to my workflow series where I basically teach you the ins and outs of all of the different productivity apps that I use, including Roam and Notion, the best way is to sign up to CuriosityStream who are very kindly sponsoring this video. If you haven't heard, CuriosityStream is the world's leading documentary streaming subscription platform. And on CuriosityStream, there are thousands of really high quality, high budget documentaries that you can watch if you like. One documentary that I've enjoyed these days is called The Blockchain Revolution, which is like a very short 20 minute documentary about the history of the blockchain and how it's gonna change the world. And the coolest thing is that because CuriosityStream support independent creators, we've got a special bundle with Nebula. And that means that if you sign up to CuriosityStream for a year, you get free access to Nebula. So this is less than $15 a year for tons of high budget, high quality documentaries, plus all of our bonus content on Nebula, including my workflow series, where you can learn about how I use all of my fancy productivity apps. So for less than $15 a year, this makes this the single best deal in the streaming world. And so if you wanna take advantage of that, then head over to curiositystream.com forward slash Ali, and then you'll get your Nebula details emailed to you, and then you can watch all of my tutorials about Rome and Notion. If you've gotten this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. You might like to check out this video over here, which is my favorite productivity apps for the iPad, which I do use occasionally, even though most of my time is spent on the MacBook. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.